Hi, it's Terry Gaines. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! In this video, I'm going to give you assembly tips on these two cards, which are very similar to each other. They just have a different card base size. Four and a quarter by 11, folded or, and scored at five and a half. And eight and a half by five and a half, folded and scored at four and a quarter. The Embellishments are very close to the same. I'm going to give you all the details on this card, which will help you duplicate this style also. The product I'm using is the Artistically Ink Bundle, bundle which is on page 96 of the annual catalog. And I'm also using the card sketch design set flyers that I've created that are card sketches of all five samples for the suite on page 96. And 97 called Expressions in Ink. There will be a link in this video to give you all the details on how you can download these 10 free card sketch flyers. And if you work with an international card base size of 5 and 7 eighths by 4 and an eighth, there, uh, there's a PDF you can download that will give you the dimensions to add or subtract to each of the layers to get your layer size for your card base. As I mentioned, this video is going to focus on these cards, mainly this card. So to get started, we'll, we'll um, prep all of the cardstock. The cardstock is basic white, as I mentioned, eight and a half by five and a half, folded and scored at four and a quarter. The next layer is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. This layer I texturized with the painted texture folder which has got a very cool painted texture on it. You're gonna place that layer cardstock in the folder, run it through your stampin' or your cut in an emboss machine. And once you do that, it's gonna come out texturized like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and prep this portion of the card. I'm using the 3 8 inch open woven pale papaya ribbon. And it's approximately 13 inches that you need. I always leave my ribbon on the spool. That way I can um, conserve on the ribbon. If I leave it on the spool and tie my bow or my knot, then I can trim this off. And my waist is only whatever I trim off this end right here. So that can conserve on your ribbon. And as I mentioned, I'm utilizing and maybe I forgot to mention the card sketch flyers that I created were concentrating on um, card B in that series so I don't have the catalog handy to show you that because the focus is really on this card and and the product and how I created it so once I have this together I'm going to adhere this or this the ribbon on this layer I'm going to use the stamp and seal and I mentioned that this size was four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So your border around the edge is just an uh, eighth of an inch on all sides. So we just got a thin border here. The card sketch does not have a layer, but you can add as many layers as you want. So I'm gonna add that portion first. Now this floral image is using the dies. The die set has this beautiful floral die and that one is going to be cut out with card or gold foil. So I have cut this gold foil to be four inches by three and three quarters and that's going to be able to cut this out. When I utilize these detailed dies I like to put the adhesive sheets on the back of this but if you notice on this card, I have this raised with dimensionals and I'm not gonna want adhesive behind these pieces that um, are raised because if I put it in an envelope and there's adhesive back there, it's gonna stick to the card. So I only want adhesive in the section that's going to adhere to the card stock below or behind it. So what I have for my adhesive sheet size is two inches by two inches. So on the back side of the foil paper, I'm gonna put this two inch by two inch piece of an adhesive sheet. If you're not familiar with the adhesive sheet, it is, um, oh, I use it all the time. It is 12 by six inch 
sheets of adhesive sheets that you can cut to the size you need. There's 12 sheets in here. And as I mentioned, I cut this down to two by two. I put it on the back. Then I'm gonna take this, place this on here. And by being two by two, it's just gonna be within this area. So then I'll run it through my die cutting machine. And once I've got that done, then I, it's gonna be hard to see on the camera, on the video, but I just have a strip here of adhesive. So that part is prepped. Now the layer underneath it, that's gonna take more work the first time you actually make this. We're gonna to have to create a template to do this. So what I did was I took the die and ran it through some cardstock, just um, any color you have, a scrap piece, just one time. Usually when you have a die with this much detail, you need to run it through your die cutting machine more than one time to cut through it. I went one time because I'm not concerned about cutting these details out. I need to create a template with this. So my template's going to be this layer underneath. So underneath, I don't want all these decorative sprig pieces. So I'm going to take a paper snips and trim those off. I'm gonna leave the flowers and the leaves, these two leaves, leaves and this one, but all these little sprig parts, I'm gonna actually trim off. So once I trim all of those off, and did I bring a pencil over here? I did, but a little bit farther out of reach. So once I have that done, I have listed here that you need um, a four by three and a quarter piece of basic white. What I did was I took this, created a template with this by tracing around this image. Just go around with your pencil. And I'm only gonna do part of it just so you get the idea what, what I did. And I'm not doing a very good job on the camera, but it's the idea of what I did. Go all the way around it. Once you go all the way around it, then you're gonna trim this and you wanna trim the pencil line off. You don't wanna see any pencil line because we want it to be just a tad bit smaller in size so it's hidden behind the gold foil. So if you can envision, you're gonna trace around the entire image, cut it all out, and then what you're going to do is line it up and just make sure that you get this all cut out so when you cut it out it all lines up and you don't have any white pieces beyond it then i would advise you to indicate a couple circles here for those flowers and one here and write template on it because if you want to make more than one card like this you're not going to want to do that whole process again just write template, keep it with your stamp set, trace it onto another piece of paper. And as I mentioned, just make sure that you've cut that so you don't have any exposed white. And if you do, it's not going to cause any trouble at all. It's gonna really kind of be camouflaged right into the card. So now that I've got this cut out, I'm gonna leave my template handy here because the reason I put these circles here, I just scratched those, uh, circled those on there, is because there's two flowers right there. And sometimes you can get this turned around and not know where they are. So I'm gonna stamp those two first. The colors I'm going to use is pumpkin pie. I have pale papaya and granny apple green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out by stamping those two flower pieces and you don't have to be exact on these, but I'm gonna stamp them like so. And then I've got some white space here. I'm just gonna go around here just to fill that white space in. I have one leaf here. This is the one leaf stamp, and I'm going to stamp that and just go on it to fill in a little bit of green. I'm just trying to get some added color so I don't have the white space there that larger flower, and while I'm at this, I'll do this flower over here, right here. The larger flower I'm going to do in 
kale papaya. And I'm going to see, line it up like that. And that's pretty good. And I want to get that pumpkin pie center. So I'm just going to go like this and just eyeball that to be right there. That should be good. I want to get the leaf over here. So I'm going to do that in granny apple green and just fill it in a little bit. And when I'm doing this, I'm just kind of filling in that white space a little bit. Over here we have the smaller flower and I'm going to do that in pumpkin pie. I'm going to do it one time in pumpkin pie and then I'm just going to go like that to fill in that white space. And if you don't fill in all the white space, that's okay. And now what I can do is lay this over and just look how that color popped. So as I mentioned, that's a little bit of prep work. You only have to do one time until you get your template created and then just hold on to that because then you can utilize that for additional cards. This is a beautiful card. I have happy birthday set on it, but it can be for so many different occasions. Now on the back of this, let's see, do I have my um, take your pick tool here? What we need to do is find that end with that adhesive. This adhesive sheet allows you to pull this backing off, then you have adhesive. Now because there's so many different cuts in here, and because we're in the middle, we're not peeling from the end, you're going to have to work a little bit to get this all off. But as I might not have mentioned, this is just such a wonderful adhesive to use with these detailed dies. You're going to love it. Now what the beauty of this too is, there's no adhesive behind the leaves. So what you can do is you can place those down to help get that lined up. Place that down. Once you get those leaves lined up, and this seams lined up, you can, of course it won't go as smoothly when you're doing a video, but I'm going to say that's good. Then I can put that down and that's how I created that floral image. So what we have here, we can adhere this down with some dimensionals. You don't have to use dimensionals. I just love using dimensionals because it's going to add a little um, dimension to your project. And we want to make sure that it gets enough support. It's a larger image. So I'm going to do a few extra and I'll put one here too. Um, probably should put a couple more here. Let's see. You can um, remember to get them off all of this. I'm going to add a couple more here. I'm going to put one here and just the beauty of these edges are these are still good pieces so you can take and trim those and add them. They're really strong. You're going to love these dimensionals. It's a strong adhesive and there we go and you can just put this on any orientation you would like and I'm going to place it right like so. Now if you happen to have an area that you're like not happy with that's exactly where you would put your banner, your, your sentiment banner. This banner is, a, um, I have it cut at three and five eighths by one half inch. And I'm going to use the ba pick a, banner's pick a punch. I usually work with this upside down and this is a half inch strip. And the reason I work with it upside down is sometimes I don't get it in there straight. And I, if I look at it while it's upside down, I can tell that my banner is um, in their square so it cuts out. I usually cut my banners on both ends first and then stamp the image on here. I'm using the happy birthday and pumpkin pie and to save some time I did that ahead of time. And as I mentioned you can place this to camouflage any area that you want. And um, the beauty of this type of stamping is there's really no mistakes and any of your stamping, there's no mistakes. But I am gonna put this across, kind of right across where these two flowers meet. And I didn't even get that dimensional in the right spot. 
So let me see if I can get that. Oops. Um, my videos are unedited. I'm not going to <laughs> redo any of my my oopses. This was this was excuse me. This is what would happen if we were in person too. I would just have to fix my mistakes. So I'd get that a little bit better. And I'm just going to go across here and I'm going to go on an angle. And then the last thing I'm going to do for this card is the champagne rhinestones. I just think they go very well with this color combination. And they are in a packet with three different sizes. So I'm going to just take and add a few of the smaller ones on here. And there's just adds a little bit of sparkle to your project. And we'll put a medium one on there too. And you can put as many as you want. And we'll just put one more over here. And we'll stop there. But you can put as many as you want. So that is how I created this card. As I mentioned, this card is very much the same. This was the very first one I did. And I don't know if you noticed, when I created this template, I cut the leaves off. I went ahead and finished the card, but when I made this first one, I'm like, oh, why did I cut those off? So all the ones I've made since then, I have added the leaf back in. But once you create this template, just keep it with your stamp set so you can do this in any of your favorite colors. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you found me via YouTube, there's a direct link to my blog post to download a PDF that has all the dimensions in the supply list and the instructions. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the red box. I'm sorry, click, click the bell after you subscribe and you'll be notified if um, when I upload new videos. I'm sorry, all the bloopers in this video. But um, also, if you... Um, don't have a demonstrator, would like to order any Stampin' Up! products, um, there's a direct link to my Stampin' Up! store in the comments of this video. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed creating this project. Take care and happy creating.